2013. It's a crazy year. All right, in January, Lance Armstrong admitted to doping in all seven of his Tour de France victories, rocking the sports world. Remember that? Here's something you might not know. In February, 100,000 people marched to demand justice for the atrocities of the Bangladesh Liberation War in Dhaka during a genocide that most Western countries don't know much about. It's said that 300,000 to 3 million people were killed. It's also thought that at least 200,000 women were raped by the Pakistani forces and their collaborators. 25,000 victims found themselves pregnant. And there are eyewitness accounts of rape camps set up by the Pakistani forces. Hope they get the justice they deserve. In March, golfer Tiger Woods returned to number one ranking in the golf world. And in April, it was a beautiful Monday morning, as any morning they would have had, except the energy in the air was soon changed. People started to approach the finish line. It was then that a couple of homemade pipe bombs went off just that moment, and history changed in the Boston Marathon in 2013. In May 6th, Walmart becomes the largest company by revenue on the Fortune 500 list. Price drop. <laughs> In May, also, Bill Gates, Bill Gates <laughs> regains his position as the world's richest man with $72.7 billion after losing the position in 2008. Yeah, a couple of dollars, right? In June, India defeats England to win the 2013 ICC Champion Trophy in cricket. And Malala Yousafzai addresses the United Nations and calls for worldwide access to education. She's amazing. In September, Microsoft purchased Nokia for $7.2 billion. Guess Bill had a couple extra bucks, didn't he? <laughs> November, also a typhoon, the typhoon Haiyan, rips the Philippines to shreds. So it's the most horrific hurricane to strike their land ever, killing over 6,000 people. Some good news. In November, Bat Kid saved Gotham City. Yep, thousands of volunteers gathered to transform the city of San Francisco into Gotham City in order to fulfill the wish of Miles Scott, a five-year-old leukemia patient who dreamed of being Bat Kid for a day. He even had a video from then-President Obama thanking him for saving the day. It was an incredible moment for little Miles, as well as thousands of people that were inspired that day. In the prior year, 2012, while in first grade, Dylan Siegel's best friend was diagnosed with a rare illness called glycogen storage disease type 1B, a rare liver disorder that doesn't have a cure. So Dylan, who was six years old at the time, was determined to do something about that. To the surprise of his parents, he wrote a book. The book's called Chocolate Bar. And it exploded, not the book, but the sales in 2013 with teacher sales, uh, website raising money. The book cost 20 bucks and all the proceeds went towards finding a cure. So Chocolate Bar, to this date, has now raised over $1 million <laughs> to the delight of researchers studying the disease and now hopeful to actually find a cure for the devastating disease. There's no doubt. I just shared some information with you from 2013 that was horrific from the things in Bangladesh that I didn't even, it's, I couldn't even believe I was reading it. And then to moments like Bat Kid and chocolate bars. So no matter what, we're always going to face horrible times. And what we feel may be horrible may not be as horrible to somebody else, right? We all have problems and, and our problems seem to be pretty big. At the end of the day, problems are problems. Pain is pain, hurt is hurt. We all go through suck, it happens, right? But then there's also times that we have incredible moments and chocolate bars and bat kid, right? That can happen in our lives. So my question to you today is we uh, do a debrief in the last decade from 2010 to 2020. We're now looking at 2013. I want you to take time today to think back and examine your life in 2013. And when you're looking at Bat Kid and you're looking at the chocolate bar experience in the stories that I just shared with you, uh, the key thing that I want you to really hone in on that point is, is the serve. Not, not that uh, the, the one who was served, like the boy who, uh, who got the Gotham City experience or the boy who got proceeds for uh, the research to help heal uh, and cure his disease. Uh, what I'm trying to, to get to here is... What, what kind of serve have you done in your life that was the serve to somebody else? How did you help the little boy become Bat Kid for the day? Or how did you write a book called The Chocolate Bar to help find a cure for a little boy? 
It doesn't have to be that dramatic. It could be even better. It could be less. It doesn't matter. The point is, where's a serve in your life that you feel like you did in 2013 that paid off, like today, over a million dollars in sales on the chocolate bar in, in your life and possibly in the life of somebody else? I would love for you to go down here and share what that serve looked like in your life back in 2013 and how it may have affected somebody else's life uh, even to today at 2019. All right. Can't wait to read your responses and to hear your stories about your chocolate bar and your bat kid moment. Yours 2013. Comment below.